Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. How are you guys doing? This is Everyday Gardening with Erica and it has been a few months since my last video and I apologize. Uh, summer has been extremely busy for me and that's one of the big reasons but not the only reason why I haven't been shooting a lot of video. Um, but we have had a lot of summer activities and family vacations, so it's been a little bit challenging. We also have had a lot of rain. Um, normally we have rain on the front end, you know, the springtime, and, and then towards the back end as fall starts approaching. But it has just been nonstop rain. Just as when I think we get a, a break in rain, it rains um, another week straight. And that's really kind of how it's been. It's been a week on, a week off, week on, a week off. And it has been a struggle to just get out here and get uh, some of the garden maintenance done. And to be perfectly honest, I just haven't been able to keep up with it, not just because I've been busy with activities, but the rain has caused all of the weeds to just go completely out of control. So as soon as I get an opportunity to kind of trim and uh, cut all those weeds out of the way, it rains for a week straight. And you know how that rainwater is, it just completely boosts those plants. And so it's out of control yet again. And with all those weeds comes bugs. And so we've had a lot of pests that have hit some of our crops this year. Like for example, squash bugs, you know, we had the zucchini and a lot of the squash and those squash bugs just completely pulverized some of our plants. Now we have some watermelons and I'll show you those in a minute, uh, vines that are growing and they're starting to get attacked by those same bugs. And it's, I didn't even know that those bugs did that. So um, we have had a really difficult time between the weeds and the bugs just trying to maintain, um, you know, the garden. And we've lost a lot of, um, you know, harvest too because of those two things. And with the rain, um, if you have inconsistent watering, and in this case, you know, we've had a week on, a week off, a week on, and just trying to figure out how to balance that uh, saturation, it has torn up my tomato plants. And what I mean by that is the tomatoes have split like really, really bad because we've had too much water. So it's been hit or miss with trying to get those tomatoes harvested in time to be able to enjoy them. But more often than not, they're, they're just, they're gone. They're just so far gone that I'm just feeding all of my tomatoes to my chickens, which is not a complete loss, which I love because I, I hate to throw away produce, but I would have really enjoyed having uh, a lot more tomatoes this year because I was excited to learn how to can and, and preserve a lot of those um, tomatoes. So anyway, I will tell you that I have not been motivated at all uh, in between those rainy weeks because the weeds have just been so out of control and the bugs and it's just been a battle, a constant battle. So I haven't been recording like I should and I apologize. It's just, it's something that I'm gonna have to work through for sure. <laughs> But um, I will show you kind of what I've got going on, which is not much, it's kind of the tail end of the summer. And I need to really start preparing for the fall uh, garden. And I, have, um, I haven't really sat down and laid all that out yet, but I need to do that very soon. One of the things I really was excited about doing was planting a, um, a pumpkin patch. And I had the area laid out where all my onions are, but because of all the bugs and because of all the weeds and we don't really quite have any borders around our, my in-ground garden, I've been very discouraged about planting because I just don't want to go through all that trouble and it be wasted. So I have a feeling that, and I even, look, I even purchased a bunch of pumpkin seeds for this year and I have to get these in the ground like now. I actually think I'm like now or a little bit late and I just, I'm just not motivated to do it. And I'm disappointed because if I, if I do this, the bugs are going to come, the weeds are going to attack, and it's just going to be full of disease. And it's just, we have some work to do for sure. But let me turn the camera around and show you kind of what we've got going on in the garden. It is not pretty. So this is real, you know, real video footage here. Um, behind me, I still have some onions that I'm wrapping up for my onion harvest. You may have seen that in my last video. But what I do is I, I harvest the onions and then I set them in here to dry out, which is what is happened with this. So if you've seen my last video, you see how I clean these up and I have these beautiful bulbs. I would say the majority of the onions have been this size, which is not bad. I mean, this is still very, very good. Um, and I've had both um, the red onions, actually three, the red, the yellow, and the white onions. And now occasionally I get some really big ones, which is awesome. Um, but I would say the majority of them, as you can see, are this size. But these have been amazing and they taste so good. So if I can say my one success story for my garden in 2021 this year has been my onion harvest. All right, let's jump into the garden so I can show you what we got going on.
All right, it is voiceover time, which I'm gonna have to start investing in a microphone for you guys. Right here are my tomato bed, and you can see that on this side, it's a little bit open. I've had to pull out a couple of tomatoes because of disease. And I wanted to show you this tomato. You see how it's split? It's all over, and it's pretty deep. So this is just not edible, and I'm gonna have to feed this to the chickens, which I'm sure they'll appreciate. But yeah, you can see how deep this split is. Then there's another tomato that's doing the exact same thing. So I can't even get to them fast enough before they're splitting with all this rain. In the front of the tomatoes, I planted a whole row of uh, peppers, a different variety of peppers. The first two are going to be my shishito peppers. And this plant is stripped. Something has actually uh, eaten all the leaves off of this plant, and it's very disappointing. But you can see there's some new leaf growth. I have harvested quite a bit. Oh, wait a second. This is the culprit right here, this little worm. That's what's been stripping my pepper plant, so I'm going to take that off and feed it to the chickens. But the shishitos have been really great this year. I've harvested quite a few of the shishito peppers, but it's just really disappointing to see how it got stripped like that. Oh, and we had a little visitor from one of the chickens. And y'all, this chicken loves me. I'm not really sure why, but this one chicken follows me wherever I go. All right, back to the garden beds. Here... Um, again, the shishitos, we've got a couple of them on there. And the next one is, um, actually the next two are jalapeno peppers. And they're doing really well. So nothing's been eaten on those. You can see there's a couple of jalapeno peppers on these plants here. So they're looking really good. Not too bad. On this end, we had two of the determinant tomato plants. And I had to pull those out because they were done. And I went ahead and planted uh, another Lemon Boy plant. They were actually on sale at my grocery store, and I really enjoyed those tomatoes, so I planted another one in hopes that I can get a second, a second tomato season because our summers are so long. You can take a look at this tomato. This is the bomb diggity here. These are also peppers, but all bell peppers, different varieties. And we popped in a couple more jalapeno peppers because we like jalapenos. This um, I'm sorry, this bell pepper here is a orange yellowish bell pepper that is ready to harvest. Looking good. And then we have, this one's actually supposed to be a red one, so it hasn't quite turned yet. But it's pretty big. Looking good. And then this other bell pepper is the Big Bertha regular green bell peppers. And so we have one of those on there as well. So the bell peppers are starting to produce... Uh, some some fruit here Overall the bed has done pretty well and looking at the second bed. I planted um, All of the cherry tomato plants so you can see they're going crazy So I don't really prune much on the cherry tomatoes. So they're a little wild looking But We have gotten a lot of little cherry tomatoes on here. Some of them have split And here's one right here that has split just to show you which I feed to the chickens And then there's some that haven't split so they look really good but we've gotten quite a few cherry tomatoes off of these plants and we've really enjoyed them. I believe those are the sun gold. Here are some more tomatoes that I've planted. I'm not really sure what they are, to be honest with you. I think I just took clippings from the other tomato plants and stuck them in the ground. So we'll see what we get. We have two basil plants that I've planted, a sweet basil here, and it's actually starting to turn. It's getting hard. You can see that it looks like brown sticks. They're very hard and coarse. So they are pretty much on the tail end of their life. But I have harvested quite a bit of sweet basil. And this is purple basil, which is Adam's favorite basil. He loves to cook with this. And that was his one request this year was purple basil. So I've gotten a lot of harvest. If you've checked out my Instagram, you can see the harvesting I've done. On this side, I popped in a sage and a rosemary plant right next to each other. And they're doing really well. Looking good. I haven't harvested anything just yet. And this, I'm not quite sure what this is. I don't remember if this is a broccoli or a cabbage. It doesn't look like a cabbage. Maybe it's more of a broccoli. And I planted this in the spring, and that's as far as it's gotten because obviously it's too hot for this type of cold weather plant. But it was just an experiment, and it's still alive, so that's good. And here are some more tomatoes on this side, which I'm going to have to tie up because they're just they're too long. And they're going to start falling over. All right, so that's my second bed full of tomatoes, and let's walk over here 
and you can see what's happening. Well, this was a sunflower I popped in, but it's done. So I'm going to have to pull this guy out because he has lived his life. And there you go. Okay, so we have our cucumbers, which are just now starting to take off. But again, with all the rain that we've gotten, look at the cucumbers. They're yellow. Weird. I read that there some some articles say that they still taste good, and some articles say that they're going to be bitter. So we'll find out. But it is the reason is because we have so much rain coming. There's some more, and these are supposed to be the pickling, but obviously they're too big for that. And, and now here we have some odd shaped cucumbers that just didn't get pollinated right, so they're a little funky. But the, these are the cucumbers. They're doing something. It's better than what they were doing, which was nothing. And I'm not really sure why they're just now starting to take off so late in the season, but it seems like that's the trend these days. On this side, these are my beans, and I believe these are pole beans, but these, you know, the markers on them have all washed off, so I can't tell what's what anymore. But there's some baby beans on this plant here, you can see. There you are. There you are. And they've got the pretty little purple flowers. On this side is the okra, and again, this was planted in the spring. Something's chewing on this one a little bit, and they are just now starting to take off. So there's some baby okra there, and I think there's another little baby okra. There it is, right here. So the okra is now taking off. So it's so weird that everything is jump-started late in the season. On this side of the garden, we had sunflowers planted, and I was really hoping for a huge sunflower patch, but it was kind of sporadic throughout that space, which was okay. It was my first time. Um, as well as some corn and these beautiful marigolds, which I actually purchased a box of marigold seeds from the Dollar Tree. And this is, this is what I got. Look how pretty those orange flowers are. So the sunflowers I had to pull out, there's a couple little patches of the marigolds. But next year I'm hoping that we're going to have all of this bordered out so that there, we don't have any problems with the weeds. And there's my ugly pile of old sunflowers that I need to get rid of. So those are the three beds that we had planted. I've got my beautiful little mower there and we're going to walk over here to the peppers that I had put in containers in hopes that they would do a little bit better and they look the worst of all the peppers. So we have pulled some peppers off of here. You can see the shishitos are doing good but it's still there's another shishito. And these are some jalapenos and stuff but the leaves are very yellow and they just they look puny. This is not the peppers that I had this time last year. On this side, I had got a couple more cherry tomato plants and planted them in the buckets. I used some eggshells as some mulch, and I thought that was pretty fun. So I'll probably do that as I get more eggshells. And I'll start staking these up in hopes to get some more cherry tomatoes. And there is my little hummingbird feeder, which we have quite a few hummingbirds. And walking onto the other side of the garden, we have the in-ground melon patch that is covered in weeds, as you can see. It's just, it's too much. And so I had to pick some weeds around the melons just so that I could see it. And you'll see there's some new growth there now that I've opened it up and exposed the vines. And there's a little watermelon. A little baby watermelon. Look at the bugs. There, those are the bugs I'm talking about. This... I don't know if those are squash bugs or what, but they're covering all over these vines and getting into the melons themselves and just destroying them. This is the cantaloupe that has just started, and there's quite a few baby cantaloupe on here. Let me turn it around so you can see. There's a baby cantaloupe there, more bugs everywhere, so I'm worried about those getting eaten, and another one there. And there's a little baby one in there. So there's quite a few of the cantaloupe that I need to protect from these nasty bugs. Walking over to the other side, this is also another watermelon plant. And the bugs have already attacked this one right here. You can see there's a bug on it and it's all brown because that's what they do. I don't know what exactly, but they destroy the melons. Last but certainly not least is this watermelon. And look at this big old watermelon that's growing. It's really exciting to see something this big and so far I have not seen well there's a couple of bugs but I have not seen any damage yet to this melon so there is hope for this watermelon after all so here's the overall look of 
our watermelon patch, which really just looks like weeds. And this is where the onions and the potatoes were earlier in the season. So I need to get a border around these beds to keep the weeds out and maybe help with the bugs a little bit. So there's a lot of work to be done on these beds over here. In the corner is Pear Bear, my pear tree. And this poor thing got stripped yet again. And I don't know what stripped it this time because it wasn't the ants. I think it may have been the grasshoppers. These are the jessamine vine plants and they keep getting stripped and every time they grow new leaves like they're growing right now, something comes around and strips all of their leaves off again. So they just, they can't make it. That's yet another thing that um, we're dealing with over here is black widows. I have never seen so many black widow spiders. It is insane. But, you know, garden spiders are okay. I wanna show you this garden spider that I've been watching on my shed. I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see it. And man, this thing has gotten so big. And if you are freaked out by spiders, you might wanna fast forward to this because this thing is huge. So let me show you. So you got to see a little bit of the garden. It's not pretty. As you saw, there's lots of weeds, there's lots of bug damage, and that has just been a constant battle all spring and summer. And so when the rain comes and there's not a lot of work to be done because the rain's in the garden only feeding those weeds, um, then it's a little bit discouraging to come out here and work. And it's so humid, by the way, too, because of the rain. Um, I'm hoping next year is going to be a little different and I know that I've got to give myself some grace and be a little bit patient because this is just my first year and I have accomplished a lot uh, in a short period of time, but there are some things that we want to implement by this time next year. Um, one of those things is going to be borders around the in-ground beds so that way we can keep the weeds out of the growing area and keep them under control. And then also, um, I would love to, and I don't know if this is doable or not, but I would love to be able to finish out some more raised beds. But the price of lumber right now is through the roof, no pun intended. And if any of you have even tried to build something uh, or purchase lumber, or even try to build a house and you saw that the price is pretty much tripled, um, that is part of the reason why we haven't even started finishing out those raised beds because the prices are astronomical right now. So I'm hoping that maybe um, when we get around to next season, those prices have gone down and we can start building some more beds. And the really big dream that we have for the garden uh, to suppress a lot of those weeds is to put gravel in the garden. That's huge. Um, it's also very lofty in, in price um, and in time, but eventually that is going to be our goal. It may not be next year. Maybe it's the year after. I got to be patient but I would love to be able to suppress a lot of those weeds with um, having the raised beds and then having the gravel um, underneath. So that way, you know, even if one or two pop up, I can, I can manage that. But when your entire surface of the garden is covered in weeds and bugs, that's a whole different story. So big plans. And at some point, um, since we're dreaming, I think we're gonna finish out the garden shed and make it really nice and homey. But honestly, it's kind of low on my totem pole because it's functional and um, it's serving its per it's serving its purpose. So um, it's just really just making it pretty and giving myself a little bit more storage because there's stuff everywhere in here. I don't really have any storage, but I'm okay with that. I would rather get the gravel and the raised beds done so I can keep growing and, and get that under control before I even get to the pretty stuff. So maybe that's a 2023 project, I don't know. Well, I am so excited that um, I was able to shoot this video between the rain and, um, and the humidity and everything. And thank you guys for being patient with me. I hope you at least enjoyed that little snippet so you can see that, you know, I'm not perfect and it's okay. Things happen. Life happens. You get busy, you get discouraged, and you just don't want to go out there. And that's just real life. Um, I'd like to be able to say that I'm out here every day at a certain time every day and I have a routine and I have it all under control, but I don't have it under control. So um, hopefully you can take that away and give yourself some grace as well if you start your garden or if you're in the middle of some of the same struggles that I'm in. Well, until the next video, I hope that you have a good rest of your summer. Hopefully we can get some more videos out. And thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. So when I do actually post some videos, you know that they've been posted. 
and the notification bell too is what will notify you of that. Alrighty guys, have a great rest of your day and rest of your summer. Until next time, bye. Thank you.